All right, let's sketch a graph of tangent of 2x. Um, I copied the graph of tangent of x just so we could peek at it. And maybe we're curious from last video why it makes this shape. Um, so let's peek at the unit circle really fast. Um, and just a reminder that tangent x, we'll come to the 2x in a second, is sine x over cosine x, which basically in terms of the unit circle is like y over x. Um, so here, right, here's x, here's y in terms of the unit circle. So tangent, it's just the ratio, right, of the height over the width. So you'll notice it starts at zero, right? Because the height is zero, that's why we have a zero. And then as it gets bigger, the height gets bigger and the width gets really small. So that's why it goes up, right? Because we're doing this ratio of height, the y value over width, so as we get closer and closer, it's going to um, get closer and closer to infinity, right? This is going to get really tall, and this is going to get really skinny. So we're dividing by tiny numbers. And then what happens is as we approach, let's do the circle. So we're just going to, as we approach this one, now we have 1 over 0, which is why we're approaching infinity, because we, we're getting 1 over really, really, really tiny numbers. And then as we jump to the other side, it jumps to the negative, right? Because um, sine is positive, but cosine is negative. So we're just gonna jump down here as we get closer and closer to zero. And then it's just gonna kind of repeat that pattern. Um, that's just if you were curious why it made this shape. And it's getting asymptotes every time cosine is zero. So let's see what happens with 2x. So 2x is basically gonna grow twice as fast, right? The x's are getting big twice as fast. So it's going to be skinnier. It's going to grow twice as fast. Um, it's basically like a horizontal compression of two. Because remember, horizontal always does the opposite. So it shrinks it in half. So everything's going to happen twice as fast. So let's sketch this. So we're still going to have asymptotes, but they're not going to be at pi over two. So it'd be twice as fast. So pi over two, we'll divide it by two, which would be pi over four. So that's where my first asymptote will be. And then three pi over two over two would give me three pi over four, right? Just cutting everything in half. On the left side, we'd have negative pi over four and negative three pi over four. Basically it's growing twice as fast. And it's gonna make the exact same shape When I graph them side by side, they look the same, but they do have different asymptotes, right? That, so the asymptotes are all right here. Um, and then they keep going, right? So 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and so on, but just a couple is enough. Um, we have intercepts. Um, so 0 would be an intercept. Let's do them in a different color. There's my intercept, there's my intercept. So basically these are also happening twice as fast. So this one was at pi, because that's halfway in between. So now this one's at pi over two, negative pi over two. And so my guess is the next one would be three pi over two. So those are my intercepts. And then the period would be just twice as fast. So the period on a regular tangent was pi. So now the period is pi over two. And that's the graph. So the main idea is everything's just happening twice as fast. So um, again, we're not super memorizing these, but we're familiar with the shape. We could look at the original and sketch a graph. Um, we're not masters at this yet, but hopefully we could at least use the original graph to help us do this. So let's check out secant now. Um, so if I'm going to do y equals 2 secant x, um, because it's 2 over cosine x, I'm actually going to graph 2 cosine x. And you'll see why in a second. Oops, sorry about that. So if you have a lighter color, um, we'll sketch that first. So we learned cosine x um, starts at the top 
and makes this shape. And then the two just makes it go to two rather than one. It just had a slightly taller amplitude. It's stretched vertically. So it goes up to two instead of one. And then a cycle was two pi. So that would be two pi and negative two pi. And then everything's related to the unit circle. So it's pi over two, pi, three pi over two. Because those are like the zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two. So we're just kind of going through that. So negative pi over two, negative pi, negative three pi over two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw asymptotes anytime cosine is zero. So that's why it's helpful to just draw the cosine graph rather than try to solve for asymptotes. Or two cosine x, but cosine. Um, so you'll see that pi over two, three pi over two. Should make sense, there'd be one at five pi over two, right? The pattern continues, right? Negative pi over two. There's infinite of these because we could just keep going and going, right? And so on. So those are my asymptotes. And then the graph is literally just the reciprocal. So we're gonna draw those weird parabolas above it. And the reason it's doing this is it's making a reciprocal of the current shape. So it has no intercepts, it never crosses. It has no x-intercept, sorry, never crosses. And it just makes these little parabola-like shapes. It's not a parabola, but it's similar. Um, and it's just basically a reciprocal of cosine. And then the period would be the same as cosine. So the period is the length of a cycle, which is 2 pi. So let's just check out these graphs on Desmos. I don't remember if Desmos does secant. Oh, it does. So 2 secant of x, yeah, and then 2 cosine of x. And you can see they're just reciprocals, like opposites of each other. And then let's go back to the first graph just to check. So let's look at regular tangent x. And then you'll see tangent of 2x just grows twice as fast. So growing twice as fast makes it skinnier. It's kind of hard to look at. <laughs> but yeah, you can see all the blue things right there. Skinnier, they're growing faster. So when we have a number inside parentheses, it's actually growing faster. Um, so I know these graphs are hard. Um, if you took trig, you really mastered these, and so you definitely have that advantage. Um, if you did not take a trig class, you might feel a little overwhelmed. Um, but I would definitely like put these four graphs and sine and cosine like on a piece of paper so you have this like summary to reference. So you can at least use the base graphs as reference as we try to sketch these. Um, we're not going to do too many transformations at a time, probably just one. So you shouldn't, it won't be as crazy as some of the other transformations we've done. Um, but if you took a trick class recently, you're probably feeling really good. Um, if not, have a piece of paper, like have all six graphs to reference as we do stuff. Um, it's a little overwhelming, I know, but we'll get through it. Um, we're going to take a gra uh, break from graphing in the next section, so that'll give you some time to catch up. All right, I'll see you back for the next section.